What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today we got the update notification and we have a bunch of things to talk about. So let's begin with the weapon refines. Aversa is getting one and she's easily one of the most popular merch projects because of her supported weapon. If Aversa could get a more lenient HP check for her weapon, that would really help her. Maybe something similar to Virian's weapon refine. And Aversa really struggles with her damage output. Um, it's pretty much the thing which a lot of plus and Aversa users will say because you have to HP stack on her with her slotty and sacred seal. So a lot of times she's not able to hit very hard, especially for the arena purpose. But they can fix that by giving her the Plagian effect because she herself is a Plagian and you have literally given this effect to Legendary Lucina. So maybe something with the Plagian effect that can give her extra attack depending on the debuffs on the enemy would help her so much in her damage output. So I'm really having high hopes for Aversa because she is such a popular merch project and I hope that her weapon refine is really good. Tebarn is the next unit who's getting a refine, a beast unit. So Tebarn does have the HP condition in his weapon which is definitely going to be getting more flexible and he's used a lot of times for Gale Force so maybe having something that can give him the special acceleration and a beast refine like Nyla's weapon refine was really promising so I think Tebarn is definitely going to be getting a good one and he doesn't really have to have too much to you know just become better he just needs to have a slightly more flexible weapon that can give him more things maybe even Kanto that would be really helpful. Then we have Ilgar, and Ilgar's weapon um, just gives her plus for attack and speed. Now they could definitely try and fit the Niffl theme here. Niffl people are all about debuffs. Uh, Gantra has insane debuffs. Reed also has the debuffs. And then we have Fiorm who has got debuff neutralization. Um, so maybe they could have a combo of both of these effects on Ilgar to make her a bit more unique. Um, and as it is, she's actually quite unique because uh, we do not have a lot of blue dagger infantry units. She's the only one who has got a preferred weapon in that category. The other units are like Dancer, Rayoma, and Kolm, who's present in the normal summoning pool. We also have Selkie, and Selkie has really, really low attack stat. So I think that she's definitely getting some kind of true damage that can scale based on her resistance, because resistance is her best stat essentially, and that's how her weapon functions. So she definitely needs a lot of help. Um, so true damage is pretty much going to be the way of getting her damage output up to the speed for the modern times. And then finally, our seasonal refine for this month is going to be Spring Veronica. Veronica definitely has decent enough stats to be a really good mage flyer if she gets a very good weapon refine. And her weapon is kind of anti-synergetic with desperation and things of those nature. So I'm wondering that maybe they will try and give her some kind of dive bomb effect so that she can run um, the trace skills a lot easily in the slot B. Range flyers don't really have a lot of slot B options so maybe giving her something that she naturally cannot have can certainly help with her weapon refine. And then we also have the Ephemera manuals. So the first unit that we have is Young Marth. So for the people who are trying to, um, you know, get the Pharma Soul for him and trying to plus and merge him, this is definitely really good because he can get the merge out of the Pharma Soul and also by merging this Ephemera manual into him. And that can definitely save you orbs if you're trying to aim for the rerun, which is going to be happening in April, I think, for his banner. So really good news for Marth fans, but outside of that, he doesn't really have the best fodder. He does have Speed Defense Oath, which is not present in the Grail Pool, but I think that eventually it is going to be available at some point. And he just has Shield Defense, so that is not really too good. We also have Felicia. She does have Special Fighter, which is definitely a pretty useful skill on many builds. But then again, we do have the Steady Breath Sacred Seal. So a lot of times you can just run Crafty Fighter or just some other fighter skill like Slick Fighter and combo it up with Steady Fighter, so you don't really need to run... Um, you know, special fighter. And if you're a big Felicia fan, then definitely try and hold on to this copy because she's probably going to be getting a weapon refine next month um, because she's going to be next in line along with Picnic Flora. So yeah, it's pretty similar to the uh, Spring Veronica ephemera that we got and then she got her weapon refine. The next unit is going to be Halloween Sophia and she has amazing inheritable weapon in Spider Plush. And this is a really good defensive weapon because it's always active in the enemy phase and it provides you with the guard effect and also debuffs the enemy for minus 5 attack and gives you more attack. So definitely a pretty nice inheritable option especially for some of the bulkier blue mages and Sophia herself is a decently popular merch project I would say. The other fodder that she has got is sabotage resistance so if you don't really want to kill a Solon for this skill then I guess she could be useful. We also have the fury master here. Fury is uh, still a pretty good budget skill for a lot of builds, 
so that's never too bad to have. We also have Luthier, who is the source of Guard at 4 star in the normal summoning pool. So Guard can definitely be helpful with a couple of builds. Obviously, there are just so many good slot B skills and Guard's threshold is not really the most lenient thing, but still it's good to have on some of the budget builds. TL2 does provide with the dual rally and drive speed. So drive speed is going to be the main skill that she can offer. Um, so pretty nice support skill to have on slots of any kind of unit. And then the final unit that we have is just having smite and that's pretty much it. His other skills are not really all that good. So the ephemera lineup that we have this time is not the best, but still we do get the special fighter for free on Felicia. And I guess it's good for the marked fans who are trying to merge him up. And now let's talk about a lot of the other changes which are happening. So Arena Assault. So this game mode has been, you know, rotating with Summoner Duels S and Summoner Duels R. It's not always available and they're trying to make some, you know, changes to it. They're giving two tactical retreats in Arena Assault and that can definitely help you when you're at your last match and you do some kind of misplay and you lose your entire run. So it could definitely help you in that regard and it is going to be called Arena Assault Plus now. They're also giving Dragon Flowers as the rewards and it also has the Chain Reward. It will be similar to Arena where you can get more rewards based on the chain that you have. So it can definitely be helpful for giving Dragon Flowers really easily. Even if you don't really care about Arena Assault, you can still just auto battle and just get the Dragon Flowers. And Dragon Flowers are definitely pretty hard to get, especially Infantry Dragon Flowers. If you have a lot of favorites, then you definitely have to pick and choose who gets to have the Dragon Flowers. So I'm pretty happy about this. A lot of people who don't really care too much about Summoner Duels R or S have been missing Arena Assault and it definitely makes it better for them as they can get more rewards out of this and it's a lot easier to play now because of the tactical retreat. And now that we talked about the good change, let's talk about the bad change. And this bad change comes in Arena. So bonus units are getting updated there and a lot of people have been wanting more bonus units but uh, they have a really weird way of uh, fulfilling that request by basically changing up the uh, bonus units every single week instead of changing it like 2-3 weeks. There's a bit of exception to this where the recently released new heroes, special heroes, legendary or mythic heroes are gonna be swapped out on a bi-weekly basis but basically everyone else in the bonus lineup is gonna be getting changed every single week. And the reason why this is a bad change is because it makes it incredibly hard for free to build players to get value out of the units which they invest into for arena purpose as a bonus unit. For example, if you merge up Shigure to get value out of him for a couple of weeks for, you know, maybe staying in tier 20 or like going up to tier 21, then you only get the value of your feathers for like a single week and that's it. And then the bonus unit is gonna get changed. So it becomes really hard for a lot of free players who play Arena to keep up with the feather cost that is gonna be coming with this kind of change. And it definitely makes it a lot more incentivizing for the people, um, you know, to get the new units that are appearing on the new banners or the legendary and the new mythic heroes, stuff like that, because that is not gonna be changed every single week. That is still gonna be done like the old way. So that's pretty much their ways of incentivizing using the more uh, recent units and also the merged bonuses. And nowadays in Arena, it's insanely tough to stay in tier 21. And this is gonna be making it even harder. So yeah, not the best change, honestly, when it comes to Arena. Arena as a game mode depends a lot on the merges the BST and also the high scoring skills so it's not going to be easy to keep up with all of that investment every single week if you don't really have their most recent new unit out of the banner or the new leisuring unit that is in the rotation or something like that so definitely going to be pretty hard to keep up I pretty much try to maintain tier 20.5 but it's definitely getting a bit harder because of the high scores that you need to get and now this is going to be another layer of uh, you know challenge that you have to face with the bonus unit so yeah, I'm personally really not excited about this change. And then we have some more Memento events, which are definitely pretty adorable to have every single time. Um, and then we have the new trap for Ether Raids. This is another thing which is a bit weird to me. So this is a new type of trap that is not invalidated by Disarm Trap. So this could be considered like a way of uh, kind of indirectly nerfing Disarm Trap because it doesn't really work on this. So the way it's worded, it feels like even if you smite onto this trap, you're still going to be getting the movement of your unit just completely ended, which is definitely a bit annoying because this kind of, you know, again, proves as a nerf to the aggressive strats, the gale force strats, the disarm trap strats. So it's pretty much that. 
the good news is that the HP of this trap is not the highest. So at the moment when it's going to be available, the highest HP that it can, you know, work on on the opponent is going to be 55. So you can easily try and boost the HP of your units with, uh, you know, Mythic Blessings, with Summoner Support, just running skills, refines and stuff like that. And it's not really the hardest HP to get over because people have been trying to out HP structures since a long time. And I think it's going to be a bit more detrimental to the Fury, Double Fury, Gale Force strategies or the Winter Bernadetta strategies, which wants you to be at low HP. I guess still you can try and test this trap with a higher HP unit by just smiting your unit. And if your unit has got more than 55 HP, then this trap does nothing. So that's the way of testing this trap, but still let's see what happens when it actually comes out. Um, and if it's actually not going to be like six traps, maybe they can just make it so that you can just have four traps. You just have to select which ones you can have. So you'll probably have to let go of one of the traps um, and you cannot really have like six traps on your map. So I hope it's something like that. And then Ether Resorts is getting two new songs, a new captain skill for summoner duels as well in mass confusion. Definitely a pretty interesting name. So this gives plus five to your captain during the combat. And on turns 2 to 5, it basically debuffs the foes who are adjacent to each other for minus 7 attack, defense, and resistance. So this effect can definitely be pretty useful if you're running a Plagian effect like maybe Mail Morgan or, you know, one of the Plagian weapons. It could go really well with that. I really wish this actually gave you the speed debuff as well because speed debuff can matter a lot of times. So the enemy can actually, you know, avoid this debuff by not being close to each other. So it can definitely force that kind of movement. But we'll have to see how this skill actually does against the other skills. If there's like quick draw, um, in the selection with this skill, then obviously everyone is going to be picking quick draw over this mass confusion. Um, so yeah, favorite level is also going to be getting increased to 1800. So you can get more dragon flowers with those rewards. I believe it is going to be uh, flying dragon flowers this time. Mule Strike is going to be getting a new update with the level cap of one of these structures. Lissa and Gonzalez are going to be in the grail pool, so really good for their fans as uh, they're going to be popular merch projects. And they've also done a few changes where it's not possible to merge a lower rarity unit into the higher rarity one. This didn't really do anything before, it just gave you like SP. The merge level of the higher rarity unit does not really increase. You cannot really increase the merge level of your 5 star unit by merging 4 stars into them. Um, so it's pretty much to make it so that the newer players, I guess, don't really make this mistake because the, they are probably going to be doing that at some point and they probably received a lot of complaints or feedback with that so it's a good change to prevent that kind of mistake and uh, they also changed the art of uh, desert azura they pretty much made it so that um leanne's ears are a bit more pointy before she had more human-like ears which is not how it's supposed to be for the herons or the you know lagoos essentially so yeah, that is all for the update. A lot of changes this time for the Colosseum game modes and such. Let me know what you think about this update in the comments and which weapon refine are you looking forward to the most out of this patch. So hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously and if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more Fae videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Disarm Trap against the new Hex Trap. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.